Intermittent fasting has done wonders for me. I want to give you 13 tips that will help you be successful in your journey with intermittent fasting. Hi, Greg Whitmore, Taiyi Mountain Wellness. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're new to my channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you know when I put out new videos. And at the end, if you get some value, hit that thumbs up button. All right, so again, I'm going to tell you 13 ways that you can improve your chances of being successful with intermittent fasting. So let's get right to it. Let's go to my laptop. Again, we're going to be talking about tips that can help you be successful with intermittent fasting. I'm going to share 13 tips that'll help you be successful. It's done so many wonderful things for me and I want you to be successful as well. And some of these tips aren't going to be anything earth shattering and there have been some things you've probably heard before, but they're worth mentioning again. So let's get to it. I always start off by talking about how it's benefited me. I wouldn't be so passionate about it if I didn't reap the benefits of intermittent fasting. Talked about all these. I'll put that in a, in a video up above here. But I've lost 32 pounds in just over 32 months. That's a couple years ago, and I've kept it off since then. That's the hard part with dieting, right, or, or weight loss is oftentimes it just comes back. But I kept it off for over two years now. Uh, I no longer take medicines for an autoimmune disease. I sleep better, have more energy, all those things I've talked about. It's just been amazing for me. So let's talk about tips so that intermittent fasting can help you. Tip number one, start slowly. This is the most important thing I can say. Just like a workout program, if you haven't been working out for a while, you don't want to go in and start lifting lots of weights, running big miles, or you'll be sore, you'll be discouraged, and you'll quit. Same thing with intermittent fasting. If this is new to you, don't go in and thinking that more is better. Start out slowly. Start out easing into it. I can always help you with a schedule that helps you do that. This is probably the biggest mistake that people make. But be patient. You need to be patient. Don't step on the scales every day. It's kind of like that old adage, a wash pot never boils. If you're stepping on the scales every day, you're setting yourself up for discouragement. So just be patient. I always say give it about a month, month and a half. It was easily a month and a half before I really started noticing the weight coming off. You should notice that you feel better, but be patient and start slowly. It's a marathon. Our life is a marathon. We don't it took us a while to get unhealthy, maybe get overweight. We're not going to make that up overnight or even in a week. Tip number two, know the side effects. All right, so there will be side effects. This won't go perfect. And there are several of them. I'm putting out a video pretty soon to talk about side effects, some which I experienced, some which I haven't, but I've heard others experience. And it's important that you know these side effects and you be prepared for them if they happen and they're almost all temporary you just have to be aware get through them and, and move on and hunger is probably the number one side effect when we talk about any type of dieting weight loss program not eating as much as you used to changing your eating pattern we're gonna have to deal with hunger even as a long time intermittent faster I still have to deal with hunger at times but there's ways we can do that tip number three work on your health so you are considering intermittent fasting to improve your health maybe it's to lose weight maybe it's to get off your medications maybe it's to reverse type 2 diabetes but you are certainly interested in your health we want a quality of life and a quantity of life so we're working on our health and we need to not just focus on one part of it or nutrition and i talk about whitmore's big five and nutrition is certainly number one but if we want, really want intermittent fasting to work for us, we need to not only consider proper nutrition and work on our diet, eating better foods, but we need to manage our stress. We need to sleep better because all of those things, uh, including exercise, will just help ensure that intermittent fasting will work for us as well. Tip number four, stay busy. While you're fasting, it's important to be busy. 
Plan your fast during busy times, especially your extended fast once you get to that point. I actually, once in a while, do 72 hour fasts, but 48 hour fasts, maybe once a month, and 24 hour fasts. And I always plan those for times when I'm really gonna be busy. Maybe I have meetings scheduled. I'm not going to be around the refrigerator, around the food. So I plan it out pretty well to help ensure that I'll be successful during those, those fasts. And of course, we know that boredom increases hunger. So we wanna stay active. So stay busy is tip number four. Tip number five. Ride out the hunger waves. This goes back to one of the side effects. You will get waves of hunger. And we have to know those that that's not because of willpower. It doesn't just come out of the blue. Hunger is caused by the habits that we have and hormones. So we can control our habits and we can help control when those hormones are secreted. Hunger is temporary. We have to know that. So if we can get through those waves, we can get through that hunger. And I'll put out a video just on hunger, knowing that it's probably the number one enemy that we have. Tip number six, research, okay? There's lots of information in books. There's lots of information on YouTube. Make sure they're reliable sources. I think uh, the number one person that I listen to is Jason Fung. He's a nephrologist. He has the obesity code, uh, intermittent fasting, life in the fasting lane. They're all great books and he's great information. YouTube, I listen to Thomas DeLar. He was a keto guy, but he has a lot of good information on intermittent fasting and a lot of research base. He's kind of a research nerd. So, but there's other good resources out there too. Tip number seven, drink water. Now I tell this to everyone, intermittent fasting or not, and I probably don't do good enough job at this, but we get dehydrated. Our cells need water, so we need to drink water. It's even more important during a fast because as you know, oftentimes hunger is really just thirst. And if we quench our thirst, we take care of hunger. Also, I like to add sea salt to the water. Sea salt contains electrolytes and sometimes some of the headaches that we get are because we're thirsty and we don't have enough water, enough electrolytes. Tip number eight, drink coffee, drink tea. So I'm fortunate, I love black coffee, no sweetener, no creamer, but it's important that whatever we drink, as far as coffee or tea, it has to be unsweetened. So black coffee is my go-to, satisfies some of my hunger pangs and uh, also a little bit of, of hydration with it. Green tea is an outstanding source. Make sure you don't add any sugar or cream or artificial sweetener. Even though artificial sweetener has zero calories, there's a cephalic effect that I'll talk about in the body. If it tastes anything that even mimics sweetness, it'll uh, cause insulin to spike. Tip number nine, break your fast correctly. This is one that I had to learn the hard way. Sometimes we fast for a certain amount of time, whether it's 16 hours, 20 hours, 24, 48 hours. And so we think we can eat anything and everything, but it's important to not binge. For one thing, it'll cause a lot of problems with your how you feel. Your stomach uh, will actually shrink the stretch receptors in your stomach change, the microbiome, the bacteria, changes so if we binge it'll almost make us sick and we'll have some bloating so you want to break your fast correctly usually start with a little clean protein i like to start with maybe some chicken just canned chicken eat a little bit of that uh, wait about an hour and then eat my normal meal but never binging is never a good idea tip number 10 apple cider vinegar so i have a video that i'll put down in the description below it should be at the top of the screen right now Apple cider vinegar, there's so many benefits, but one thing I do is take it before a meal. I actually drink Bragg's apple cider vinegar that's described in the video that I'm referencing. But a lot of people don't like that, so they take tablets, and there's some good choices out there. Uh, but without going too much into apple cider vinegar, it is important. It moderates the insulin response, it regulates 
blood sugar and just has a tremendous benefit for intermittent fasting. And, and there's other benefits too uh, from apple cider vinegar, like skin health. Look at that, watch that video, but may, plan on taking apple cider vinegar while fasting. Tip number 11, make fasting fit your life. All right, the beauty of intermittent fasting is it is flexible. It can fit into whatever lifestyle you live. It can fit with any diet. Remember, fasting, intermittent fasting is not a diet. It's an eating pattern and it'll fit your life. Don't try to switch your life around to fit dieting like some other diets have to, you have to do. It's flexible. It'll work with you. You just have to schedule it. Works with any schedule. Work day shift, night shift, graveyard, it'll work. It can be more challenging, but it works. That's the beauty. Tip number 12, don't worry if you slip up. Too many times on people on diets, they slip up, they get off the wagon, and they feel defeated, they feel guilty, and they stop that diet. That's why diets really don't work. With intermittent fasting, you don't ever have to feel that guilt. In fact, you can plan to slip up. When I go on a vacation, I don't want to fast, so I know I'm going to be off that intermittent fasting wagon, but I know uh, I won't feel guilty, and I know I can just get right back on schedule when I get home. So don't beat yourself up. That's one of the biggest hang-ups and why people fail at diets and losing weight because they feel guilty. Tip number 13. Have a mentor or coach. Now you can do this on your own, There's, but there's so much to know and there's more research coming out. And it took me a lot of research and I, I love it as a health educator, I love that research, but it took me a long time to know what I know now. And you can either spend lots of that time learning it from books and videos and different publications, or you can just get coached by someone. And I have a link in the description below and, and a video out that I'm willing to coach you and I'd love to coach you to help you be more successful. So if you're interested in that, just uh, look at the link below and get coached by someone. If it's not me, get someone to help you out. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of grief. That's it. Whatever you do, get started today. That's 13 tips to help you be successful. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I'll give it a thumbs up if you got some value and certainly hit that notification bell because I'm putting out more and more videos now and you'll get notified at any time I do. Again, check out my blog, tinymountainwellness.com. There's articles on intermittent fasting, apple cider vinegar, tips, mistakes, side effects, all that. So there's a lot of information, but get started today. Intermittent fasting can be great. In improving your health and wellness. So take care and we'll see you in the next video.